and row by row by row by row by row by row in front of me all starts lighting on fire. Boom, 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 boom. The chairs in my room, boom, 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 all start lighting on fire. Boom, I'm still sitting here, by the way, still watching all this happen. Boom, 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 boom. It finally gets underneath me and literally lights a fire under me, and I go. I'm gone. The only thing in my head is gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out. Just gotta go right now, gotta leave, I gotta go right now, gotta go, gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out. I make my way, and there's like a guitar tech for one of the bands, and he's there trying to tune a guitar, and doesn't pick for some weird reason. And I go up, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna pick, let me check. My pants are all saggy back in the day, so I'm just like this, going crazy, and I'm trying to find a pick, and I can't find it. He's like, it's okay, dude, I'm like, thanks. I gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out, and I run. I mean, I walked out of that church as fast as my little chubby legs could take me. <laughs> and I go, and I go, and I go. I nearly kick a guy, but I go. And I run out of the church and down this busy street. This church was located on a very busy stretch of highway. And I'm running towards the highway out of the church as fast as I can go. Gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out. I don't know what's going on, gotta get out. Cars are passing by, they're going by. Gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out. They're passing by. I'm not sure what's going on. There's no one else around me. Gotta get out, gotta get out, gotta get out. And something, what I don't know to this day, grabs me and sits me down to the curb. And I'm so afraid. And I just start pouring it out. I'm like, God, please take this away. Just take it all away, God. Just take it away. Take it away, God. Just take it all away. Just take it away, take it away, take it away. I was scared. I was alone. I was terrified. I was in absolute fear. I was in a rock and a hard place. I had no idea how to get out. We've all been there, we? Maybe not that particular situation, but we've all been there. We've all been in a rock and a hard place where we're sitting there in our chair where our world is perfect until that happens. And our world crumbles. Our world flips over and crushes under the weight. And then we get trapped in these four bars, these four walls that we build up around ourselves and keep our heads down trying to, to figure it out, trying to figure out the problem and we can't necessarily do it. And we're looking down and we're we're scared. We have no idea what's going on. We've all been there. And guys, I can tell you right now that you, if you're in that particular situation right now, you're not alone. Because every single time that we're in this situation, this is where a good friend is coming in. Because a good friend will walk up and will notice you in that particular situation will say, hey, you okay? Here, come on, let's get this chair. And they'll get their chair up right. And they'll help you. Because, guys, friends, don't let friends lose their life. If you learn anything from me today, learn that. Tweet that, put that on Instagram, Share it with your friends. Friends don't let friends lose their lives. Because that's what happens. When you get caught in those four walls, and you get so ingrained where all you are is looking down, and you feel surrounded, you feel overwhelmed, that can go very, very wrong, very, very quickly. And that can lead down a very, very dark path. And that that dark path often ends in tragedy that's covered on the local news. And I don't want to see that happen to you. At all. Because friends don't let friends lose their lives. Jesus did that. If you don't believe me, he actually followed, tried to, the principle. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there to John 8. If you've got the Bible, go ahead and pop it up, John 8. If you don't have it, that's okay. I've got the words on the screen. But John 8, we'll start out in verse 4. 
And while you guys are flipping there and pressing buttons and everything, let me get you a real spot of where we are. Let me fill the pages for you. In John 7, it's a, it's a gigantic festival. The end of John 7 is the end of the festival. Jesus is there. It's a normal, everyday thing for Jesus. He's there at the temple, having a good time, teaching, you know, being watched by the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are like the religious experts, right? So he's there, and he basically says, Hey, everybody, just want to let you guys know I'm the Son of God. Just saying, you guys might want to go ahead and follow me. You know, you follow me, believe in me. I am the Son of God. Well, the Pharisees hear this, and they're like, No, you didn't. And they go crazy. They go, He's a blasphemer. You should be done. Let's have him arrested. So they go to the guards, and the guards are like, okay, cool, let's go check it out. The guards go over there, they check it out, they look, and they go, whoa, that guy's good. They did the full Keanu Reeves everything, like the full whoa, like, whoa. It was crazy. They said, this guy is too good, we cannot, we can't arrest him. So then that ends the day, the Pharisees go their way, the guards go their way, and Jesus head back to Mount of Olives. And that's where we go with verse 1. Jesus returned to Mount of Olives, verse 2. But early the next morning, he was back again. A crowd was gathered, and he sat down and talked. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought out a woman who had been caught in the act of the truth. They put her in front of the crowd. So take one of this. The Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. Adultery is having sex with anyone who is not your spouse. Anyone who is not your husband or your wife. That's adultery. The Pharisees had caught somebody in the act. They caught somebody, they caught this girl doing the hippity the hippity. And they're like, no, you know what, that's wrong. And they took her out and paraded her down. In my mind, they paraded her down and was like, Look at this lady right here. Yeah. They call her every name in the book, adding nothing but shame onto this place. And then they throw her down in front of the crowd. Right in front of Jesus. Let's check out what happens. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. Which is another way of killing people with the legend of like throwing rocks until they die. What do you say? Verse 6. They were trying to strike him into saying something that they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and rubbed the dust with his feet. So they're trying to strike him and say, okay, you know what, we really do want to kill this girl, but we're going to let Jesus take the blame for it. So we can use it against him, so we can speak against the law and go for that and cause a huge division. But Jesus kept quiet. Verse 7. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, All right, well, let the one who has never sinned put the first stone. And he stooped down again and let the dust. So he stepped down. They're causing all their noise. Pharisees causing all their noise. We're down. And he's riding in the, in the dust. Trivia fact for the day, if you ever wondered what he was writing, 42 legends to nothing confirmed or anything. It's earth condemns earth. And he's writing it down. He's writing it and he's basically ignoring it. What happens when you ignore somebody that's trying to demand or ask you a question? They get mad, right? They get angry. They start demanding things. Which, by the way, anybody demanding anything of Jesus, it takes a huge cohonus. And they keep demanding and yelling at him. He's like, all right, you know what? Let he who has never washed his parents' car for the first step. No, it's not. Let he who has never twerked. <laughs> yeah, the first step. That, no, that's not. Look at this, guys. Look at this. But let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Let the one who's never made a mistake in their lives, let the one who's never said, you know what? I'm absolutely perfect, throw the first stone. Because you know what? I sin every day. 
I send today. I send yesterday. I'll send tomorrow. Not on purpose, but I've sinned. You've sinned. You've made mistakes. Not one person in you has lived a perfect life. Not one of us. Take a look around. Take a look at the people you think that you, you like or people that you think don't like you or the people that you don't like. Take a look because your sins are the exact same as their sins. The exact same. No one is better than anyone else. And it's that principle that gives us next part power. Check this out. When the accused returned to this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd of the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Wow. Go and sin no more. Whoa! I'm not sure about you, but that's, that's grace. That's power. That's compassion. That's joy. That's justice for that girl. That's justice for us. That we have. It's absolute amazingness that we have that as people. To go and sin no more. That girl probably, most likely, went and followed Jesus from that point. I know I would. But from here, that's where Jesus said, he's like, you know what? Pharisees, you guys aren't going to take her. You guys aren't going to kill her. I'm not going to let you hold her responsible for that because I take her sin. I absolve her. I forgive her. Because Jesus didn't let his friend, the woman that presumably he never knew, anxiety comes from his oldest, right? He said, you know what? I'm not going to let her lose her life because she needs to do more. Friends don't let friends lose their life. Friends don't let friends lose their life. So how do we do this? How do we go from... Okay, that's cool what Jesus did. That's awesome. But how do we apply this here? How do, how do you apply it? You go from here and take it out there. I'll tell you. There's two things. <laughs> First off, you see something, you say something. Sounds like that. You see something, you say something. And no, I'm not talking about being a car. I'm not talking about being a rat. I'm not talking about ratting somebody out to the cops or ratting somebody out. But... You see something that's going to hurt somebody else? Yeah, do that. Because then you're saving lives. Because then you're being friends. Friends don't live friends. There's a lot. But I'm talking the courage that it takes when you see somebody who's all alone, who's presumably been rejected by everybody else, the person who's sitting alone at lunch, the person who's sitting on the beach alone, crying, or maybe just sitting on the beach alone, Probably has no friends. You don't know. But they say something. Go up and say something. Go up and say, hey, you okay? Hey, you want to come with us? <coughs> don't leave them out. You see something, you say something. That's where it counts. Because when you see something and you say something, you do more. But we'll get to that in a second. A friend of mine, is a very, very good girl. She's been made fun of her entire life for being on the way. Her entire life. She's been made fun of. She's been called every name in the book, every joke in the book that you would ever think of, every joke that you would probably call other fat kids. Even if you have, you've been called. She's been called. And she's been bullied day in and day out and day in and day out. And what happened <laughs> is one day, a kid, not a friend of hers, this random kid, hates him. And he, he steps up. He, he sees this happening and he says something. He goes, you know what, guys? Stop. Nothing. And he stayed there with her until they left him. Until they left. That was it. Done. 
And now she no longer gets bullied by anyone. Because someone said something. She's now included. She felt love. She felt that love and that patience of Christ. For somebody who's not even Christ, this is something I'm not even talking about for just us as Christians. I'm talking about something that you can share with your non-Christian friends. Or if, you're, if it's your first time here and you're not really too sure about Jesus yet, one, welcome. Love the fact that you're here. Two, take this on board in your life too because it applies to you. You see something, you say something. You include people in your life. It's the right thing to do. And speaking about doing, here's the second thing. You see something, you do something. You got to see something and say something. Now you got to see something and do something. This, um, this point actually requires a bit of commitment. And no, I'm not talking about a commitment you would have in a relationship. I'm not talking about signing to your contract with Verizon. I'm not talking about anything. I'm not talking about suddenly getting into a buying a brand new car or getting into a very personal romantic relationship with somebody that you just met. Somebody that you just did that. I, I don't advise that at all. This is what I'm talking about, is when you see something, you do something, you do it until the job's done. You do it until that person's comfortable. That person can then get up, feel that they're okay, that they can continue on. And they keep going. You see something, you do something. Back when I was 16, and I'm sitting on the earth, and I feel all alone, and I feel absolutely terrible, and I'm writing fear and pain. And I'm just praying, God, take this away, take this away, take this away. I feel a hand on my back. And a guy sits down next to me. Now, this is a guy who I kind of looked up to in the youth group. He had been there before. And he was one of those guys that was just, I mean, I never really talked to him. He seemed more popular. I was in the social outcast. But he was like, okay. And he sat down and he said, hey, you okay? I just told him about that. I was like, man, there's a fire back there and there's flames and there's this gigantic beast looking thing and there's just everything and I just gotta get out. I just gotta have this prayer that God takes it away. You know what he says? It's alright. Let's pray. And he prays. The most that he ever did was the least that he could do. Because he said, you know what? I'm going to take it. He prayed. And because he prayed, it, in that very dangerous spot on the curb of a very busy street. <laughs> I can tell you that right now, I'm before you today. I'm here today because of him. You want to know something weird? I don't remember the dude's name. I don't consider me a bad person, but I don't remember his name. Because the only thing I remember is that action. Where he did something. Where he quite literally was the hands and feet of Jesus. Where he gave me the love, he gave me the compassion of everything that happened, everything that came forth and came to that one spot, he personified it just with him. Because he knew what it took. Guys, I'll tell you right now, that when you see something, and you say something, and then you see something, and you do something, you become the hands and feet of Jesus. You become, quite literally, the personification. You, have, you put on him. And you carry his love and you show his love to someone else. You show the love of what he did for us when he hung there on that cross, covered in his own blood, and looked at each and every one of our mistakes that we have committed or that we will commit. And said, you know what? I want her. I'll pay the price for you. I love her just enough that I would pay that price. I love them enough to carry that with Jesus will never, ever let his friends lose their lives because those who believe in him 
Never die. Ever. So when you see something, you say something. When you see something, you do something. And that's what happens. That's what we can do. And that starts tonight. Starts tonight. With us making a decision. And Allison's going to talk about that in a second. Making a decision to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm not going to let those outsiders do that anymore. When I, and when I hear somebody else doing something wrong or talking bad about somebody behind their back, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say something that says, hey, that's wrong. Stop. Knock it off. Because all we're called to do is build each other up and That starts now. It starts tonight. And we can do it. You know what will happen when we do it? We will change the world. I promise you. Because you got to do something. We can do it. Because friends don't let friends lose their lives. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for all that you do and all that you are. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity tonight. God, I ask that you would please show us the ways of what we can do to be your hands and feet here, to show your love, to show your kindness, your compassion, and your grace, the same grace you gave us to others. God, I thank you for each and every one of the people in here who have heard this message, that they would go out and show we thank you, Lord, for everything you do. Everything you do. Please keep us safe. Keep us in 